good evening uh, and good day to everybody because I think we've got people uh, in the US and other places as well. So welcome to Cambly Chess Club's weekly online meeting. Uh, these Tuesday meetings started actually almost a year ago in March last year uh, as a way of members keeping in touch and learning from uh, chess talks and tuition and analysis and things. But that's all grown and the attendance has grown um, and we've developed the talks into a lot more other things like consultation matches with uh, other clubs. Uh, we've had uh, top players presenting at special events like we've got today with Cyrus and we've got in a few weeks time with uh, uh, another international master who's a member of our club and Andrew Martin. So if you're interested in that, then uh, look out for that one. Um, <clears throat> the first few meetings are free for anyone to attend. We want to get as many people to come and, and uh, uh, enjoy these meetings. But obviously to cover our admin costs and continue to develop the content and get uh, more and more uh, top chess professional guest events, then uh, we do have an annual online membership of only £10. So details of how you can pay can be found on the membership page on our website. So please uh, head on over there and, and <coughs> help us keep these things going and expand them. So today is, as mentioned, is one of the special events with a top chess professional guest. So let me hand back to John, who I think is going to introduce him. Yes, yeah, thanks, uh, Martin. Um, yeah, so... This week we have uh, a guest from San Diego, California. Um, I hope I've got this right, but uh, I believe Cyrus was born in Bombay uh, right. and lived uh, lived most a lot of his life in Montreal. Is that right, Cyrus? Correct. And yeah, I, I lived there uh, thirteen years. Okay, that's and, and to, uh, Montreal when I was five. Mumbai. And then from 18 to 60, I'm, I'm in San Diego, so. Yeah. And um, I think it's also true to say you've, you've written, what, uh, around 50 chess books? Is that about right? Um, my next one will be number 50. Yeah, whichever one comes up. I, I, I'm, I'm working on, uh, let's see, 52 and 53. Uh, 50 is coming out, like, so, <laughs> well, I, my great fear, is, my great fear is that like I'm talking about Capablanca and a book of Adorf, you know, I mean, you can get me up, you know. All right, then. Um, great. Thanks for that. Well, um, I, think <clears throat> I will now hand over to Cyrus to talk about initially his recent book, Rewire Your Chess Brain. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for attending and thanks to the Camberley Chess Club and John Upham. Um, so I'm not really talk about rewire your chess. I mean, all the examples will be from rewire your chess brain, but uh, I wanted to talk about the benefits of a completely new way to study. Um, I accidentally discovered it in 20, a harder, cardiologist, heart attack at the bull, you know, in sure. So they stopped playing, but I, I stayed till 2019. Finally, I, you know, I could feel the, the pressure in the chest. Every time I get into pressure, I said, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm out. You know, So I, I quit tournament chess and uh, thought, okay, all my life I've been playing uh, competitively. And so maybe Let's look at the beauty of the game. Uh, I, I thought uh, endgame studies and composed mating problems were purely esoteric, like completely no connection to, to your chess. And so I started uh, solving every day. I, I did a few problems, uh, endgame studies and problems every day. And I noticed within months, uh, my online started to rise, okay? It's bad age nine so i knew something was going on a coincidence like all of them up about uh, 40 points and uh using the studies are the training 
what I did was I um, I did an experiment where I started with first lesson on endgame studies and uh, composed mating problems. And I shot, okay, uh, one student named Jonathan, I don't know if he's here or not, might be here. <laughs> um, one student named Jonathan, uh, he was settling between a rating of 1290 to 1360 for the last two years. You know, he did, you know, he did online puzzles, he studied his openings, and he did everything he was supposed to do. His rating just cycled 1290 uh, to 1360. Uh, within, within six months, his rating went to 1576. And actually less than six months, much less, like maybe four months. It went to 1576. And I think he would have broken 1600 had the pandemic not hit. And I've had other students uh, less dramatic because they're kids, but Jonathan is 50. Like, how do you gain 200 plus point age 55? That's a breakthrough, right? And the only thing he did differently was uh, solve each. He would do mates in two. By the way, mating problem absolutely the, the, the best. Compose mates in two because anyone can do two. A student who solves mates in takes maybe a half hour, just moves the piece, finally exhausts any possibility and finds the mate. Um, and more valuable because they encompass everything. Um, mating problem seeing is you're increasing your database of really strange geometry. But with everything, it's, um, it's calculation, uh, it's, in, you know, tactics, combinations. Uh, main benefit from game studies is, I just, is your planning gets better. Because um, I was a horrible solver. I, I mean, I'm still a horrible solver compared to uh, some of the people on my Facebook page. I, I, I forgot to tell you, I got about endgame studies and composed mating problems that um, I started a Facebook group with uh, Australian GM Lingworth and uh, we um, chess endgame studies compositions. And it's skyrocketing. We're gaining, uh, we're, we're around, I think we're about to hit 23,000 late 2019. Okay. So we're gaining between a thousand and fifteen hundred members per week, and we are the we're number we're ranked number five <laughs> in size, but uh, we are the fast growing group on, on chess group on Facebook. Um, that's my dog Emma. Her hated enemy, the uh, man. <laughs> um, anyway, let's let's start here. This is a white to play and draw problem. Okay. Oh, one thing. Uh, I hate I hate uh, lecturing to a past audience. Um, please feel free to interrupt and ask. Okay, uh, anyone jump in if you have a question. Remember to mute yourself after the question, otherwise we'll get the audio of too many uh, people are unmuted. I mean, so right here, it's down a rook for how many pawns? Two pawns, is that? Uh, yeah, two pawns for a rook, okay. So before anything, you have to come up with a plan. Otherwise, you're just making random. Now, this is a drawing study. I thought this was a perpetual check. I could, I could envision some weird perpetual check where, let's say, knight is e, our knight is on e5, and black king goes to f6, but we play like g6 check. Or, you know, I, I thought it had to be a perpetual check problem. Um, it's not, it's a fortress study. Um, but how on earth do we start here? Like, I mean, um, we make a forcing move, okay? Uh, the first thing that popped out at me was knight seven. I mean, the, you know, attack. Where does the go? I can't, I can't see a board. Sorry. Oh, I can't see a board. Cannot see the board. Okay, I'm going to put it back to notation. How about? Okay, hang on. Let me just hit. 
Oh, John, it's my I internet. Board, or I just see the face. Okay, hang on one sec. Sorry. We can see the board, so you're not, you're okay, Cyrus. Yeah, everyone yeah. else can see a board. I don't know what James' problem is. I can see a board. Okay. My problem is I can't oh. see the board. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, well why be so... Huh. Okay, maybe uh, everyone else can see the board, Bill? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so knight f7 hit the rook on d8, okay? Now, obviously, we can't go to h8. Knight takes rook. Obviously, not g8 takes rook. So our choices are e8 and f8, okay? Um, let's calculate f8 first. Okay? Uh, that's it, okay? That's not it because uh, I go check. Now, where does the king go? Okay. You go g4. I'm just going to check you for an hour. You can't escape the checks. Okay. So back to f5. If you go here, right, is with check, double attack. We hit the king with a check and the rook of fate, and then we're up to pawns with an easy win. So it's just a quick okay. one. Uh -huh. when, you, when you went um, king g4, doesn't sort of knight h6 mm -hmm. just pick up the rook? Uh, when you're back at knight f7, you're king and f5. Oh, no, no, probably, no, no, probably. Rook, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was, yeah, I made a careless, uh, yeah. Oh, I was sorry, trying okay. to say the right You're absolutely right. What I was trying to say was black cannot dodge perpetual check there. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that was my point. Um, okay. So, so king e6 is to knight check, you know, five and take the rook. So, um, you have to go to g6, okay? And now when we go knight check, connect it here. You've connected. And let's say we go, how do you use the You go here, e6, you see? I, and so, you know, here, I'll just check you all day long, h3, g3, if you go on the g file. So there's no way of perpetual check here. So narrowed it down, we know in the initial, initial position after knight f7, rook must be e8. Okay, and one thing I've learned uh, with uh, posed um, these and problems, there is no such thing as a coincidence. Okay, I see king of rook on a fork square on d6, okay. Um, I didn't see where to go, like, let's say check, check on e3, because you'll take the knight, and if you go, uh, that's it, escape, and, and black wins. So, I, what you do is you have to c come up with a defensive idea for black, like, for instance, if, uh, the, if black plays d6, we're done. Okay, we're just going to be rook. Black will play king e6, king d7, bye bye, I'm up a rook. Okay, e6 cannot be allowed under any circumstances. Okay, so um, we test, we test things like this. And we have to let go, oh, our, our minds are so calcified by uh, conventional uh, puzzles, you know, the Fred. 1001 and just online simple puzzles. Uh, they're almost become cliches, like a, a kindergartner knows that smothered mate, right? Like, you know, the queen g8, f7 mate, okay? Uh, these are original, original poetries that you're gonna be, I mean, by some of the most brilliant mind chests. And uh, these composers are no different than uh, Fisher and Korch Larson all have their styles and uh, they're just as equipped, I mean, equipped the great players. So let's test D6 check as ridiculous as it looks. Do we have, and I thought it can't be that. It's not, I see no perpetual check because check here, check here, check here and check, forget it, okay? There's no perpetual check. Now, what else could there be here? 
I mean, what else can it be? I, I obviously can't trade rooks. I'll be down a rook and a bishop. As it turns out, that's the answer. Okay, <laughs> you trade rooks. Um, this king can off black's entire army. Okay, you trade rooks. Okay, king takes. Okay, what top priority? Top priority is we must play a3. If we don't play a3 and we try for a fortress and we bring our king to g1, uh, black will move the bishop off the first rank, the eighth rank. Black will move the king off the eighth rank. Black will play rook h8. And let's say we play king g1, the rook coming in. Now, if black tosses in a3 and we played b3, then black just plays rook c8 and we can't cover our c3. Can you, can you visualize that? Our king is g1, black rook on h8, okay? A black bishop, king, king is let, let's say on f7, bishop is on b7. If we make any of like this, okay, like here, here, um, say here, 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 here. Um, yeah, let's say, let's say we're going here, okay? So now black is threatening to infiltrate on h1. So we go here, oops, that's it, right? Or, I mean, he could actually, he could have played, uh, he could have played rook c8 right now. I forgot king can't defend it from f1. Clearly, do you see how you, you use deductive reasoning to come up with the right moves? Um, but it's mostly planning, but or not, it's not like math. Uh, the, the main problems are all math, okay? Some of them are just all math. Uh, but these are completely conceptual. Many, many are very conceptual. We must seal the position with here, okay? So let's play uh, here. Okay, so we have to haul over, right? We have to haul, okay? And so let's say we play um, king here, and he tries to come in. Black tries to come in. Nope, nope, not gonna let you let you in. And remember, Black's bishop is just uh, right. It can never escape from that uh, that prison, light square prison. A six, eight. That's it. Nothing more. So just imagine that bishop is the board. In fact, if the bishop wasn't on the board, black would have won because black would have gained a tempo to get to h8. The bishop was actually in the way on c8. So let's say black makes a, a waiting move. Like, like, see, we're in zugzwang now, okay? We can't move our king, rook e2. If we go king g1, that's it, rook e2, black wins. So we have to make a pawn move. Now, believe it or not, we can make any pawn move. It doesn't matter which one, we can go here. Uh, to the king in threatening to go to f4. Now we go here and we've created a force field against the king. Now, see, coming this way, it's the same thing. You can't get in, you can't get in, okay? But let's say we, we're giving a chance, we're giving you one chance to go to e3. Well, we go to f2. Here you're trapped and you're gonna have to give it um, this is a draw, but it's really foolish because you're basically in a king and pawn ending, uh, you're in a king and pawn ending, uh, a pawn down. Not quite because after check, uh, after let, let's say king here, uh, here, uh, black dare not play for a win. If you do this, white wins. We're just in a king and pawn ending. This guy is not gonna be stopped. The bishop is worthless. You see, we're gonna go all the way down to F7 and queen on G8. So black cannot play for a win uh, in position. And black is actually very lucky to draw. After here, you just make bishop moves. You don't do anything, just make bishop moves. And this is a draw. But um, have you ever seen a pattern this weird in your whole life that this is a draw? White has a king and black has a rook and a bishop, okay? And it's still a draw. There's there's no there's no win for for black. 
Okay, let's move to the next one. Uh, okay, it's another drawing study by Lazard. Okay, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna stop share here and get the Lazard. Kill this. Okay. Okay, what number 37? Okay. Um, okay, let me hit the share screen. Okay, everybody see it? New one? Okay. Um, this is by Frederick Lazard. It's another drawing study. Okay, this one is, is almost more impossible than the last one, okay? Because not only is black up a million pawns and a queen for a, a bishop and a knight, if the bishop moves, it's back rank mate, queen a1, that's it, mate, okay? And you have spike blocks with knight d1 and then bishop e1, but that's it, okay? Um, if you go, basically, if we give black one move, you're done for. Okay, just one move. Uh, if black, for instance, plays like uh, king f2, that's it, resigns, okay? It, it, we, we have to go after that king. Now, how can we possibly do this? What's our plan? Anyone have an idea? Uh, knight e2 is just stupid, okay? The king goes here, that's that, black wins. Um, does anyone see a, a mating pattern here? Uh, knight e1 followed by bishop e1. Knight yeah, to the bishop e1. If that knight was not there, black would be mated with bishop e1. Like, let's say I moved the knight somewhere. You made a, a dumb move. Okay, like you just went here or something. This would be mate. Okay, so now we see our pattern. You have to find... Uh, this is why they're so complementary, because the mates in two, especially the mates in two... Uh, they awaken you to um, weird mating patterns that you wouldn't have found before. And the end game studies uh, help you with planning more than anything and calculation in many cases. So the only way to threaten that bishop be one mate is what? Well, it's the 90, 94 chain. No, it's 94. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if black takes, that's it, mate. Okay. So What's black's only move? Black has to go here. Okay, now we've got a problem. Bishop e1 just doesn't work. It fails miserably, okay? Uh, if you give black this square, forget it, okay? You're not mating. If you, if you give black g4, you're not gonna be checkmating this position. Um, so what the heck do we do? Black is one move away from winning. Uh, do we try g3 check? Um, maybe. Maybe, uh, but we can maybe go here and you can't play knight f2 check. I, I'll just take here and that's it. If black yeah, has f3. Hmm? Yeah, but you got bishop e1 first. Um, or, or if you play bishop e1 first, if you play bishop e1 mm. first, g3, we have nowhere to proceed here. There's just no way to proceed from this point. Uh, our attack is just out of gas. If by miracle we could get to the knight to f5, then we have a, a perpetual check. f5, h6, f5, h6. Like, so, let's go here. Okay. So, so, let's sorry, make... sorry to interrupt, Sarah. So, in that line with king h3, could you play knight to hg5 check? <coughs> bishop b1. Uh, okay, bishop. Okay, here. Bishop b1 yeah. check here, you're saying? No, no, no. Uh, g3 check first. Oh, sorry. Um, where were we? Okay, King let's H start. You, you tell me the moves. You tell me the moves. Uh, what, what position do you want? Sorry, knight e4 check. Okay, knight. So knight e4 check. Yeah, this might be okay, complete so rubbish. King, <laughs> King must go here. So what's your question? Uh, G3. G3. Check. Oh, G3. Yeah, but I'll play here. King knight H3. Take, knight takes G3. No, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. It's not mate. See? Oh wait, you're right, it does work. Oh my God, you're right. You found a mating pattern that I missed. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Okay, I, I, uh, I take back my move. <laughs> I play pawn takes pawn. Well, yeah, see, I'll get anything you, found after a, that. <laughs> you found a you found a mating pattern that was that was hidden there. That's not even in the notes, you know. 
Um, yeah, pawn takes pawn. The problem is if you do this, uh, black is gonna win here uh, with just take the knight. And there's no, uh, this is not unfortunately stalemate because black white king has g1. So black wins. If, if we let black play g3, black wins. Um, so how do we proceed here? How on earth do we proceed? I see a pattern of knight g3, and if black plays the ridiculous king takes, then we have mate in one, okay? If, if we play knight g3 and black plays here, then we have uh, queen takes bishop, then we have this, right? Mate, which is a cool pattern, by the way. Um, so black has no choice. Uh, well, actually, black does have a choice. Black can cover f5 with something like queen c8 or queen f8, uh, and black can take the uh, What should we start with? Let's start with queen f8. Okay, so queen f8. Um, let's see, we go bishop e1 now. After take, now we're threatening knight f5, double checkmate, okay? So after take, unfortunately, bishop takes g3 check is not a draw because of king g1, not stalemate. But we have this, okay? And unbelievably, this position is a dead draw, okay? It's just a dead draw. There's no way to make progress. Um, okay, queen takes is obviously stalemate, but pawn takes is going to be stalemate because I'm gonna play here very next move. And I don't care if you take it stalemate or play king h3 stalemate, both are stalemate. And just unbelievably, this position is a draw. Like if you play c5, oh no, you don't, I just take it, right? If queen takes is stalemate. See every pawn move on d4, bishop takes, queen takes the stalemate, c5, bishop takes, queen takes is stalemate. Um, if you, do, if you do nothing, like let's just say you wait, okay, I go here. No, let's say you force it, you go here. Well, same problem, right? Bishop takes, pawn takes, g3, stalemate next move, whichever move black, black takes. Um, in this po initial position, it's unbelievable, but this is a forced draw from here. And uh, Lazard, I think, is the greatest. Uh, Frederick Lazard was the greatest uh, fortress composer of all time, in, in my opinion. I, I've uh, studied a lot of fortresses over the last uh, year and a half, and his are just mind bending. His are just absolutely mind bending. Okay, next problem, next study. Um, oh, great. Three. I wrote down, uh, this is number 37. Next one is also 37. Okay, I'll have to find it, hang on. <laughs> okay, stop, share. Okay, go to... I just have interest, I take it queen f3 can't do anything in that, that, that particular position, can it? Uh, okay, say again. Queen, um, after bishop f2, queen f3. Uh, okay, let's go back. Let me let me go back, hang on. I just... Well, that's okay, I'm gonna carry on, it's just... I thought maybe you could no, give no. up the queen and no, no, you, let's, if you can force it. Okay, maybe favor. I just, I, do, you, do you still see it? Do you still see the position or not? No. Okay, then let me let me get it back. Okay, hang on one sec. Uh, okay, share screen. Uh, it's not letting me share screen. Oh, there we go. Okay, it was just slow. Okay, do uh, you see it now? Yes. Okay. So knight e4 check, mm -hmm. um, king here. We may as well do the other variation too, um, which is take right away. We, we looked at queen f8, but we can get the same position. See, this is the drawing move. Mm -hmm. If you check down here, who cares? I, I play bishop g1 yeah. if you, if you, uh, by the way, you can take here, okay? But um, yeah, see, cool. the problem is this king easily stops the two pawns. Mm -hmm. Black is lucky to draw this actually, you know, because uh, it's zigzagging here, but black is very lucky that there's no king move, now it's stalemate. And it's black who got stalemated, not white, okay? So um, let's go back and, and look at your question. 
Yeah, but I think it works out the three. same. You take on so G2, because right then, then you get the black king stalemate. Let's say, king, let's say queen here. Okay, let's say bishop mm -hmm. f2 and queen f3. Well, I go here. What do you play? Yeah, as I say, it's, it's this. I was looking at G2, but it is this, it's the king stalemate yeah. thing again. I think this, I, I have a feeling mm -hmm. this will lose. I'm not sure. But let's just say, okay, take here. Yeah, it will. Watch here. Here, exclam. Black is mm. a move. Yeah. And then mate. Yep. See, black gets made it. So, yeah. Okay, Thank I'm glad you. you asked that because I left out all that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me go to the next problem. I, I need to find it because I stupidly wrote that it's the same one as this one, the same number in the book, and it's not. Okay, hang on. Okay, where are you? Oh, this one will be, this is a, okay, this is out of the chapter. Okay, hang on a sec. Uh, what year, 1928? <coughs> Let me find 1928, Lazard, there we go. Okay. So let's share this. Okay. This is another Lazard, but this time it's white to play and win. Okay. And uh, how does white possibly win this? The bishop cannot stop that black pawn. Like if we play here, it's too slow. Here, here, threatening bishop b1, too late. a2, black queens and wins. Okay. So um, I, I found a way to draw. Okay, where um, we play king here, here, um, here, here, uh, here, queen, and f6. Now we're threatening to queen, okay? So um, black, I think black draws, uh, see, the thing is even check here, black and white can hide and play for a win. Oh, not there, not there, because queen takes e3, but black can hide here and play for a win. But I think this is a draw anyway after here, queen, um, check. There, there's no way out, I think, of this. But there's, there's no way to evade perpetual check, I think. Here, here is a certain perpetual. So black is actually fighting for a draw in this position. But unfortunately, it's not a white to play and draw study. So what, what is our plan? He, Black is gonna queen in three moves, okay? Um, I don't see any benef benefit to playing e4 or c6. So let's go here. Now, Black King, of course, can't go here because we queen first with f8 queen. So a3, h6, um, here, here. Now what? If we play six, black will draw with that uh, that perpetual check line because that will transpose to the same position as the perpetual check line. So what could possibly be our theme here? We know we're going to get this position because the moves up to now have been kind of obvious and difficult. Uh, you need to unmute Julian if you want to. Did you say something, Julian? So I was suggesting you queen the pawn and then play f6. There you go. Yes, yes, it's a queen trap. Okay. There is no perpetual check because on here, see h7, we hide. There's no perpetual check and white wins here. So that means after queen take, we smother the queen, okay? Now black can try here, try to escape via h4. So our move would be forced, it would be here. Now black is out of moves here, okay? Except for pawn moves. So let's play d4. Uh, what should we play? Someone suggest a move here. 
Or, or I'll ask you another question. Why does pawn takes pawn draw? Because he uh, moves the queen next to the king and creates stalemate. Uh, not yet, because they, there's that pawn five. Okay, but the problem is after d5, uh, if we take on passant, then, uh, then it's stalemate, right? And if bl black needs to get rid of the pawns. If we don't take and play c6, well, it's still stalemate, right? We have to take now. And that's it, stalemate. So we, this is a little trap the composer set for us, which of course I fell for, okay? But when I first tried to <laughs> solve it, <laughs> um, you know, P.T. Barnum really was right. I, I realized, uh, you know, there's a sucker born every minute. When I first started, I fell into every trap any composer set. I would, I would just like a lemming go right off the cliff, you know? <laughs> The trick is you got to go here, okay? Now this is too slow because we just uh, we can just take here, and then we'll be we'll be classy and make a rook and it's made, okay? So that's too slow. But after c6, black has to take. And now one last trap, which we're not going to fall for because we know pawn takes pawn, queen h6 check and black will steal it. So we'll go here, okay? And see, it's gonna be close because black is queening with check, but we we mate first. So uh, another amazing situation where white wins down a queen from this position. Okay, next. Okay, uh, this is one of my favorites. It's a Kubel, Leonid Kubel. Um, he had a brother named Arvid and uh, I've, heard, I've heard two different stories. I've heard that they both starved to death in the siege of Leningrad. Uh, let me first stop share for a while. Um, and the other story, I, the other thing I read was um, that Arvid was executed by Stalin uh, for the high crime of sending one of his endgame studies to a foreign publication, which was illegal at the time. They, they wanted to keep the chess in the Soviet Union. Was it new in chess? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I, year, Cyrus, what year was that? Um, it, boy, I, I can't remember, but it, it was probably like... Uh, late 40s, somewhere in the late 40s. Maybe he sent it to B.H. Maybe he sent it to B.H. Woods. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. I, I'm i taking a chance in, a, in one of my uh, books that's coming out uh, that I am gonna use the uh, Stalin one because I read that one multiple times but I only saw the um, starvation one once in my, in my research. Uh, okay. Uh, let me find next one is 89. This is okay. 89 in your book, is it? Uh, it's yes. Exam example 89 or page 89. Uh, it, it's, it's example 89 in my uh, chess based version. I don't know where it would be in the book. It may not be 89 in the book. You should get this uh, book. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's a Kubel study. This is white to play and win. Okay, now how are we gonna win? That, that pawn is queening with check on A1 in just two moves. Uh, I, I strongly suggest something violent here, okay? Um, what can we do? I, I looked at you know, I looked at here, uh, a2, c4 check. Uh, well, I take it, you know, d3 check. Uh, I don't see, you know, take, take. Maybe the knight can get back in time. Nope, that's it. We're, we're gonna queen, right? 
Um, so, um, what these studies do is they they uh, they literally do rewire our brain uh, from orthodox solutions to radical solutions. Um, if you think about it, um, why is a move a double exclamation mark move? You know, like like holy cow, like double exclam for that move. Why is it a double exclam? It's because it's something completely out of the ordinary, unorthodox that you would never have normally had done, right? But the, the thing is, when you do these studies and problems, every study has at least one double exclam in it, okay? So you're, if you, if you go through the history of chess, you know, and you look at Alekin's greatest combination, you know, maybe against Reddy, uh, where, he, where he left that rook hanging for a million moves, uh, you know, one of Kasparov's greatest combinations, Fisher's greatest combinations. Um, they're just, they're okay compared to any old random study, you know, <laughs> because these composers, um, I talk to them all the time on, on, on my uh, Facebook page and they sometimes spend six months on one study. They just keep tweaking it and tweaking it, moving it, moving it until it's just right. Um, I don't know how they do it. I, I've composed um, three studies. Uh, one is crap and it's in the book, okay? It's the worst study in the book, I promise you. Okay, um, another one was actually a, a good one that I, I created. Unfortunately, it was anticipated, uh, meaning someone else had the idea in 1927. <laughs> um, when, you, when you create studies with very few pieces on the board, like, like four or five on the board, uh, the odds are about 70, 80% that you're going to be anticipated. Someone thought that idea before you did. With, with, with only a few pieces, it's going to be really hard to create an original. I discovered that uh, talking to composers. Um, and I, I finally did a good one. I finally did a good one, which is going to be in my uh, book, Endgame Tactical Training. I have two more books coming which are heavily loaded with studies and composed mating problems. One is called tactical training move by move. And after that will come end game tactical training move by move. Um, okay, so what's radical here? I, I, don't, I don't know what the heck we do here. I mean, uh, we could stall with knight c6, okay? And then we go here, but of course black goes here. So, oh shoot, are you, can you guys see the moves uh, the chest base moves or not? If you can, I'll move yeah, this yeah. over. It's, no, it's all visible. Yeah, it's all working. Yeah. Okay, there. I'll, I'll just move so the moves are not visible. Um, you, you're not in training. So though. here, there's. Go ahead, Colin. You, you were saying something. Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm just saying you're, you're not in training mode. I don't think of this one. Oh uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah. Okay. Let me put it in training mode. Hang on. I. Uh, Hang on one sec. Okay, training, here we go. Okay, so in this position, um, I don't see how we're gonna stop that pawn. This doesn't do a damn thing, okay? It's gonna take, you know, I'm, I mean, what are we gonna do, check here? Okay, forget it, right? A2, A1, so that doesn't do a thing. Um, C3, um, well, if we go here, yes, white will stop the pawn. Um, I, that might actually even be a win for black because black's king will go to C2 and uh, I'm not sure, but that's not the answer. Um, so here, all we have to do is A2, right? And bishop takes pawn. And now check, not that not matters because C4 check, the discovered check doesn't work because black even would have king takes D4. So even if the black white king wasn't in check, it wouldn't work. So clearly that's not it, okay? So what could the, what could the solution be? What do you think? I mean, I just, 
I just like ran out of moves. I tried everything. I tried D3. Okay. A2. And now C4 check. Okay. Well, if take, yeah, white wins. You can't win D3. I stop the queening and white wins. But obviously black is not going to take. Black can't go E6 or D6 because this obviously wins. Bishop takes, wins. The only move for black, king C5. Okay, but now uh, check here, we're too slow. King here, back, it's too late. Mate, right? Notice how I'm obsessed with under promotion. I, I don't know why, like, uh, it, when you start doing studies, you, you, you dream of under promotion every game. <laughs> okay, so that's not gonna work. Does anyone see a mating pattern here? Yeah, you can play king b7. It gets out of the there check. You go. There you go. There you go. It gets out of the check. Black does this. Well, forget it. We take and we win. And if black promotes here, we have the, a mate out of the blue. See? And mate. The king on b7 covers C, the critical c6 square. Bishop covers d6, gives check, covers b4. C4 pawn covers B5. Okay, um, but do you see how simple this position is at the beginning? Like this is not a simple. This is not a simple study. This is a difficult study. I mean, this took me, this took me about a half hour to crack. You know, maybe twenty minutes to crack. Um. Okay. Let's go next one. Uh, this one is this one is really interesting. Um. Because whenever I show it to a student, they always go, that, that's ridiculously easy. Of course, I'll solve this. Um, it's not so easy. Who's the composer, then, Sars? The composer is Hans Sur. Uh, I have not heard of him except for this problem. Okay, so number 275. Man, I'm all over the book. I wish I'd done it in order, but okay. <laughs> okay, 275. Is he engage? Is he what? Is he engage in this book? I don't have that book. That's interesting. Huh. Johnny, is this all right? I mean huh. well, no, you book. have to look have to look it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh so oh nuts. I keep the problem is it keeps going out of training mode every you know what? I will do the. I will do the. Hang on one sec. View and kill notation. Okay, that's better. I think this is white mates in four moves. Okay, I took the students and they said, "Well, I can probably do it in three. He is here, uh, but you... <laughs> what now? Um, he is here, but all it says is he's, he's Danish. Okay, okay, yeah, it's a Danish name. Yeah, I. I'm not familiar with his problems except for this one. I, I was very attracted to this one. Uh, I love, um, my favorite studies are, um, are ones where uh, outwardly the position looks really simple and uh, the truth is they're miserably difficult. They're just miserably difficult. Of. This is mate in four. So how do we, mate blacks king and four we can't go to a5 we can't go to king a5 stalemate king b5 stalemate we've already cornered the king we don't want to give more air but let's try different things okay this is how our conventional mind would work let's try um you know something like here um b7 yeah d7 would be one okay so let's go here <clears throat> here, here, here. And is that, okay, here, is that four now? Do you count four or not? Damn, now I want the notation, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, is that, is that, that four? Was four? That was four. Okay, so that means, okay, let's go back. Let's go back. I don't see what we're trying to do here. That means after queen d7, where's the mate in four? Here. 
Okay, so that's one. You got three moves to mate from this position. Ooh. If you play b5, we puncture with king c5. You're not going to mate in, in two more moves here for sure. Mm -hmm. um, besides b5, there's c8 maybe, right? But then we go back here, and that's the original position, right? We the two full moves. So queen d7 is not the answer. Do we do we have something else? Yeah, like can you hide the king on g3 here? and force the black king to g4? G, uh, G5. It's, it's B3. It's B3. Yeah. B3, sorry. That, yeah, so that is so the fun. first move. This is the first move. And black has only one move. Now, how do we proceed? God knows. Um, <laughs> queen, queen A8? No, no. Okay, let's uh, try. No, let's no, try. No, 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 you, no, so no, you no. let him off on yeah, B7. Yeah, mate, no, the, the, trick, yeah. though, the trick, though, is in these positions, You've got to see the final mate. I, I told you planning well, the is the B5. Yes, and the queen on B7 is mate. Yeah. There you go. How do you get that? So what? Oh, right, okay. King A4. You have a way to get that. Pardon me? King A4. Oh, queen, no, now you play queen D7. Now queen D7. Uh, let, let's first answer the king A4. No, because then we're... Back to the starting position, we just wasted two moves. So the first move is king, the first move is king b3. Yes. Okay. So king here. And now we keep cutting down on options. The black has only one move, right? King yeah. a6. Now queen c7. Now, yes. And now we reach our desired position here and then mate. There we go. Thanks. Oh. Okay, but it's harder than it looks. Believe me, uh, like uh, this took this took a while. I I was embarrassed. It took me like about uh, it took me I think about ten minutes to find King B three because our minds are just so ingrained for when we're mating we go forward. A retreat is so counterintuitive. This move is so counterintuitive, but. If in the beginning position, you visualize that mating pattern of white king b3, black king b5, queen b7, then, then you see it. This is uh, a Troitsky problem from 1896. Um, now, first thing we note is uh, the bishop and rook pawn, bad problem, right? The, the h8 square is wrong call for white's bishop. So if black's king reaches, you know, d7 or h8, forget it. It's a draw. Okay. We cannot allow this. So what is our first move? Our bishop first move is bishop not too hard. Bishop b6. It's not too tough, the first one. This is, I think this is an example of a pretty easy study. Okay, bishop e6, so king e7, well, we'll just ignore it right here. And uh, so if he plays uh, king f8, well, this is Zugzwang and now white little queen. So that means king e7 is forced, correct? Because king f8, h6 and little queen. So now what? We push, cannot take the bishop, it's too far away. So what will black play? King F6. F8 is out. Yeah, F6 is forced. F8 is out because we just make any old move and it's zigzagging and that's it. We queen. So every move is is kind of obvious in this in this problem, but it's a it's a really good one. I, I think it's a really good one for uh, you know people like maybe uh, below eighteen hundred because they can actually solve this. Um, now what? Threat is g6, so it makes our next move almost self-evident, right? Yeah, which is right? f5. Yeah. And now he's going to try to sneak into h8. So next move also completely natural is here. Oh. Cutting off g and g7 and g6. We have a we have a force field g8, g7, g6. And f6 trying to get to g5 isn't going to cut it, right? Let me go. And then here, and we just keep moving. 
and that's it. We we mm -hmm. promote. We just move this guy, and we promote. Okay, now that was the easy version. Now I'm going to give you kind of the same idea, but a, a, a more complicated version. This one is by Louis Paulson, 1888. Let me stop share. Get rid of this. Okay, so 69. Okay. Um, a little bit different. Okay. Black's King is already cut off. Is it that, James? I've seen this position before. I just oh, you have, yeah, uh, yeah. It it might be it might be in some Endgame books. I don't know. Or the McFarlane book on, on Louis Paulson. I I messed up the review so badly. Oh, I did not know there was a book on him. I I, I really like. I'll uh, go Louis and look. Paulson. He he was ahead of his time. Uh, he understood um, color complexes better than Morphe. Uh, Unfortunately, Morphe could calculate them under the table. That's the problem. So, um, there were actually several players. Um, the Reverend Owens, um, the the guy that uh, kept playing B six one B six. Um, he was a brilliant positional player, and so was Staunton. Who, um, the sad part is uh, calculation and tactics. Uh, take precedence. And Morphe was just superior in both. Um, I've never, I've met loads, loads of GMs that I think are really weak strategically. I mean, for a GM, I've never met a GM that's weak tactically. Not, never. Not in years, I've, I've 52 years I've played chess. Tactics takes precedence over everything. Okay. So we have to be a little careful here. Uh, the difference is there's a black pawn on b7, okay? Um, if, if the black pawn weren't there, it would be an easy win. We would just play a6 and we'd zugzwang black, uh, get our king to b6. I think we would just zugzwang and win. But the pawn is, how should we start? Someone wanna suggest? King c5. Okay, that's the natural move. Um, allows a draw with check. That's the problem. If you take with the bishop, obviously no good mm -hmm. because of wrong color rook pawn, right? Is that a draw if he takes with the pawn? Yeah. Yes, but that's still a draw. This is uh, a, this guy is like a tumor on, <laughs> and nobody's removing him <laughs> on a7. Oh, okay. uh, you, can never, you can never approach, right? Because if you go to C6, yeah. A6, C7, or C8 at any point, it's a draw. It's what stalemate. What was that term it's Turon? Hmm? What was the term you just used? Turon? A tumor? A do, do not say, do you, is, there, is the pronounced differently? Uh, I, I thought it the, was, I'm, I'm quoting Heidenfeld here, um, name dropping as usual. I thought it was Turton. No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm talking about the medical term tumor, like tumor. a cancerous tumor. Oh, I'm so uh, sorry. I thought you were using a problem. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Ignore okay. me. Ignore me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we have a problem. Okay. We cannot allow B6 with... If the king is on C5, B6 immediately draws. So let's try king E6. Um, well, the problem is this anyway, okay? Now, taking with the pawn is a draw, taking with the bishop is a draw, and here, uh, we go king here, threatening b5 now. There's absolutely no choice but bishop b8, but then we play b5, and I don't, you know, I don't know what else but b7, I mean a7, and this is also a draw. I'm just gonna push that pawn down the board, and it's a draw. 
So king e6 is out. This is one where, which you can solve through raw calculation. Like you can exhaust every possibility. Um, because the first move I thought of was king c5-2. And then I realized, oh, trap, <laughs> b6 check. And then I saw that king e6 is wrong too. So that means king c4 is probably it, OK? And he goes here. What's our plan now? What is our plan? Envision, envision well, you want to situation. force b6, you can play a6 to get the same position as the previous puzzle. Okay, we go, uh, well, it's but black's move. Uh, it's, it's white's move. I go here. Okay, you play b6, I play here. What do you want? King c7, I play king b5. King here, take, zugs wearing, and that's it. The eight pawn queens. So we cannot allow white's king into b7 or it's, it's doomsday for black so b6 is no good so what will black here play here like instead of b6 uh king c7 maybe now don't fall for king c5 b6 right <laughs> <laughs> and the problem if you go here it's zugzwang and we'll take the b7 pawn. And if you go here, um, how does white, because if we go here and here, we're in zigzwang, we need to blacks move right here. So how do we, how do we zigzwang? You win white's plan and you win. You need to move the black bishop back and then after king c8 play, some, play on the diagonal. Right, anywhere, anywhere on the diagonal here is fine, you know. And when the king goes here, we check. And here, 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 zigzag. And then we win the b7 and wins. But you know, this is a this is a very useful study because uh, you know I could easily see anybody getting in this position, right? And and then everyone will want to play king b5, okay? It's like every player in the world will want to play king b5. So we have to be aware that the, see, we picked up a pattern. We, we all picked up a pattern that we all know that bishop takes as a draw, but not all of us knew that this is a draw, right? So we just picked up a pattern there that you will remember probably, even just subliminally maybe. You know, you'll be in an end game one time and you, you'll know that with the bishop stuck inside like that on a7, this is a draw. But every study and every mating problem, you'll pick up some pattern from it, at least one and sometimes four or five. Boy, they're so valuable. Sorry, was, was, did you say king c4 is the first move? Um, yeah. Yes. I, 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 no, I think king d4 is the first move. That's what I thought, because otherwise b5 looks awkward after king c4. Yeah, yeah. And then a king six now here. Yeah. Um, now b5 check. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. That's wrong. Yeah, we need to be... No, I think it's c4. Well, let me just look, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's king... Okay, king d4. King d4. Yeah. Okay. So king c6. Oh, 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 I gave you the wrong answer. It's bishop b6 first to prevent mm. b5. Uh, See, this is what this is what comes of, of a guy who who's like a, a luddite who hates computers. Which is I I hate using computers in any way, but, but here it might have been a good idea because <laughs> Bishop B six C King B just loses. We'll just zwang. We'll get to C seven or B eight and zugzwang and take take the pawn on B seven. You see, this is here to failure for Black and zugzwang and then here and take and wins. So, okay, so king d4 is the first move. And then after king c6, bishop b6, and black cannot play um, king b5, okay? So what move, let, let's see what this study gives. King d6, okay. Uh, king king d6. d6. Okay. 
So now king we go c4. king c4, king c6, and king b4 now. Okay. Um, where do you want to play? King d6? Now we get to b5. Okay. And see, we do that same trick. We just move this guy. And then we cut off from a8. And now it's zigzwang. It's going to be zigzwang. And any bishop moves zigzwang. So sorry about that. I forgot to play bishop b6. Okay. <laughs> because b5 would have been draw there after king c4. Okay. So let's see, 78. This is another choice. Um, I, I actually vividly remember this problem. Uh, because it was one of the first ones I ever saw, tried solving. And I remember stupidly saying, um, how can this be a win? It's obviously a draw, you know? But I, I, I remember saying that where it, a win is impossible. Uh, let me find it. 78. Okay. Okay, this is white to play and win. What is the theme here? What is our theme, you think? Okay, obviously this is a dead draw, right? Draw. Okay, so we're not gonna do with that. That we can, and we're, we're not gonna move the king either. So this, this is, forget it, black, black might even win. So, what is our first move, do you think? And what is our theme? It's got to be smothered mate, hasn't it? Smothered mate, yeah. And that automatically tells you it's knight g2 is the first move because we cannot let that king escape, right? Mm. So here, now, Okay, black will take, but let's just say black sees the smothered mate and is really clever and you know plays like uh, here. Well, not that clever, right? Take here, here. Um, now easy would be like just knight g two here and check, and then obviously we're going to win this. Okay, the last pawn falls, so he may as well be a good sport and get smothered mate. It so take here check. King goes g1, okay, because we cannot allow king h2. And then here, and now what? King h1. Yeah, because we need the knight exactly where it is, and we can't play king f1 because of king h2, so king here, and forced, and then smothered mate. Um, now that's the, again, that's a example of what I would consider an easy study. I remember it was one of the first studies I ever tried to solve. And I, I, I thought, that's ridiculous. How can it be a win? You know, like... OK, this, is, this one is going to be a little tougher. Um, do you want me to switch to mating problems because we're gonna, or would you prefer continuing with uh, end game studies? Because I don't want to run out of time. I do want to have a few mating problems. Would you, would you like that, or you want to stick with the studies? It's up to you. you can take a vote. You know? Yeah, let's have a change of direction, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Let's so, do that. Okay. Uh, my favorite mating problem composer is uh, Fritz Geigold. Um, his uh, trademark was always, the defender had usually only just one move in, in most of his problems, not all of them, but the defender would have only one response on, on each turn. Now, not in the next problem, but in most of them. Um, let me find it, 196. Um, I love this composer though. I, I don't know how you think of things like this in pre-computer era, 
I just don't get it how anyone anyone could have thought of these without help of a computer. Um, the next um, several are going to be mate and two. I'm going to have a curious problem in there, but mostly guy gold. Where, where do we start? White mates and two moves. By the way, Guy Gold is um, his his trademark. Also, um, is a shocking, shocking first move. Okay, like um, he's actually kind of easy to solve in a, in a way after you know his style. Because I look for the craziest move on the board always first with a yeah, Guy Gold. Yeah, I think problem. I've got it. You do? Yeah, Queen B six. There you go. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, because it queen it blocks, six. Because because pawn takes and then the knight can go to d six, and yes. if the queen takes, then the knight goes to a three. Yes, if, if pawn takes, knight six is mate, and if queen takes, knight a three is mate. Let's look for uh, let's look at every defense though. Um, what happens here? Queen takes knight. Queen e six. Yep. Mate. And what about a waiting move? What what if we just go um you know knight c6 here? But then the pawn can move to um d yes. See, knight a3 mate is out, but d3 mate, yeah. There's no knight e6 still mates as well, doesn't it? Yeah, but I like what, the pawn no? mate. Uh yeah, I think after knight e6, doesn't knight d6 still mate? Yeah, that's a little bit of a flaw because in one variation there's a bull, right? Yeah, a oh, little yeah, bit oh, of yeah. a flaw. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you're right. Yeah, two solutions in that one. Uh, composers go like berserk if there's a cook, like where there's two solutions. Um, I'm looking at it as a coach mainly, okay? I don't really care if there are two solutions, you know, from a training perspective, it doesn't matter at all, but like you should see the, the, the grinding of teeth, the gnashing of teeth and the lamentation when there's a cook and a problem. Composers are, are like uh, super emotional about their, <laughs> about their works and the, and the, the thing they, they hate most in the universe is a cook. Here's a Paul Carey's problem. Uh, Julian is kind of wrecking it because I thought that uh, <laughs> I, I, I thought that like people would take a lot longer to solve these. <laughs> you know? like, I'm going to be out of material shortly. <laughs> Julian's solving every problem in 20 seconds. You know. Okay, let me find this one. Another guy gold. Perhaps when somebody knows the answer, they should say, "I think I know it," and wait for others. It's up to you. <laughs> That's what I did. I did say oh. that. I said, I think I've got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let me find 203. There we go. Wait. Oh, this is a curious problem. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you knew it, but Paul Curious started uh, with mating problems. That's how he got into chess. And he, he started composing too. Th this is composed by... Uh, I think he would be like 13 years old when he composed this, or it might've been 16. I might be wrong about that. Um, white mates in two. What do you think are the factors here? There is a Guy Goldian key here, by the way. The Guy Gold thing is here too. What could be the answer? Like uh -huh. where is, do you see mating patterns anywhere? Like, uh, I, you know, in a normal situation, we'd play like queen f1 threat, queen a6 mate, queen b5 mate. The problem is this, this move wrecks everything. It cuts off b5 and a6, and there's no mate in one. I have an a, idea. Yeah, coasters love to set you up with moves that look like conventional mates, but they, don't, they won't work. There'll be a flaw. Bishop C2 do it. Yeah. Yep. Bishop C2. And it's oh, Zuzwing. Yeah. 
what what is our threat by the way let's say black boy is knight f6 what is our threat well, the pawn's pinned, so you take on a2 yeah that's a threat if you if you take this way then this is me it's a zoog's wearing problem um and if you take the queen, then this is mate here. Okay, wow. That, you guys are fast. What are your ratings? I, 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 you, uh, are you all 2,400 or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> Near a 24. <laughs> Let me find next. Okay, guys. Oh, shoot, this is an easy one too. I know you're going to get this one fast. <laughs> okay. Mate and two. Think of craziest move on the board. With Guy Gold, always craziest move on the board. King A, King A2. Okay, King A2. Uh, where's your mate here? Uh, uh, okay. That's not it, right? No, no mate. Okay, go for it. Queen C3. Yep, what? that's it. Yeah, Queen C3. Yeah, the Zug Zwang. Because if you take the queen, that opens this bishop's diagonal to A7, and suddenly knight oh, yes. C7 is made. Yeah. And if, uh, if uh, pawn takes knight, we have this mate on A5. And pawn takes this bishop clears the queen for mate on c8. And here, oh, pawn takes c3 is nice. Yeah, queen, queen yeah, h8. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it, nice. the queen opens on every capture. Yeah. And what about b6? Bishop e4. Yeah, exactly. b6, bishop e4 is mate. Now, how do you construct this? without a computer. Like how on earth do, does anyone come up with this? I, I just, I don't understand the mind of, of, of a composer. On my page, one of the admins is a retired professor named Stephen Dowd. And I think he's the, I think he's the top mating problem composer in America. I, uh, I don't understand why Fide hasn't given him uh, the, at least an IM of composing title or GM composing. He's the most decorated. Uh, he's won more prizes than any American composer for mating problems. But doesn't he have to uh, put himself forward? He, 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 I don't think so. I think they just pick. Um, well, but I think you might have hit the nail on the head when you said computers. In the, old, in the old days, composers had to come up with something original and they got rewarded for it. Right. Nowadays, right. With computers, you, you you may find a sort of program to help you. Oh. Maybe maybe it's right. not highly regarded now as it was 100 years ago. Well, I may be wrong. Stephen but... is one of the few composers I know that never, ever uses a computer. He hates them. He, he, he will not use them while solving. He will not use them while composing. Um, for my ending... See, they may not know that, though. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. I... Um, in my uh, endgame tactical training, move by move, I, I I wanted to finish the book with kind of a mate and two exam for club level players. And um, I think I have 101 mates because I was trying to, I was trying to do a miniature version of the Reinfeld thousand and one. <laughs> so I had to go for 101 mates and two, all composed. Okay, every problem they're composed. And uh, I asked Steven, uh, I said, uh, I need this, like, can you, can you um, compose some originals for me for the book, Mates in Two? Because I need them to be miniatures too. They can't be crowded board position. They have to be no more than 10 pieces and preferably like seven and under. And uh, he gave me 16 original problems in seven days. Okay. Uh, th this guy is a pretty impressive composer. Um, Oh, okay. Another one? Pardon me. Quick question. Um, I, I, I know a lot about endgame studies and I've seen problems, but I've never never seen these mates in two anywhere. Where do you find them generally? 
Um, there, there's a yet another, it's a yet another chess problem database, Y-A-C-P-D-B. There, uh, there's two major um, databases. One's called ARVES, A-R-V-E-S, that's for endgame studies. And the uh, Y-A-C-P-D for um, mating problems. Thank you very much. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, this, this book's very good. But not easy to get. You know, you know what, John? I, I I looked. I have that book. I have that book. What is it? That's what the one. Pardon me. What make is it? Two by Brian Harley. Oh, oh. by Brian Harley. Yeah. 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 Problems, aren't they? This isn't quite the same thing, is it? It's something different. I think, though, from a from a training perspective, nothing beats mates in two. Like. Uh, and you do them again and again, like you try to beat your time and you try to beat your score. Like if you do, um, try to do like 100 in one session, like a two hour session, three hour session. And it really helps. I think that's why my student, Jonathan, jumped 200 points after being stuck at one rating for 20 years. Is I, I think the mates in two more than the end game studies. Uh, okay, let's kill this, go to, yeah. Okay, another guy gold. Okay, this one is 206. Let's go down a bit. Okay, another mate in two, guy gold. Well, if we take here, that's not mate next move, is it? We'll go here. There's no mate in one. There would be a mate in one here with this one because knight e2 is mate. Now that should give us a geometric clue right there. That that tells me like when I, I, I knew rook takes bishop would not be the answer but when I first tried to solve, I said, well, what happens on rook takes bishop? And I saw rook g2, then I noticed if I could get something, if I can get a black piece on two, um, knight e2 would be mate, and knight f3 would also be mate. Like if, if this bishop on g7, for instance, uh, took, oh wait, bishop, sorry, the bishop on g7 cannot move. But I noticed two mates of knight f3 mate and uh, knight e2 mate with a black piece on g2. What do you think? Here? Okay, I've got it. Bishop what G2. Bishop G2 is it? Yeah. Yeah. Can why doesn't this work? Like uh, what? But now you can play rook takes G7. Yeah. Uh, well, no, because you've got to oh, meet in no, in no, one no, move. Knight. Okay. So after rook takes, you got knight F3. If rook takes knight F3, correct. And if bishop takes, knight takes E2. Yeah. Okay. But what happens if we king take takes. here? You got king take. What about here? Okay, king takes. Then we, I think, I believe we just take rook the bishop. Seven, right? Yeah, rook g seven. Right, and mate. Yeah. Now, what happens on uh, bishop takes bishop? Not still, still right. got knight f three right? check. Because, because the bishop uncovered on the rook, and suddenly the g two bishop does not hang anymore. And. Um, yeah, I think we're like what happens here. That's not mate. Well, too. we just take we just take back and mate. <laughs> oh, oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a mess, but it's it's just beautiful. Everything works perfectly. That, that is amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, it, amazing. It's not it's not amazing to to solve. Like I mean, okay, it it's not any. I don't think it's an easy. I don't consider this an easy mate and two. But I've seen much, much harder. Okay, I've seen much harder. Um, but the constructions are so unbelievable. I, I just cannot believe that someone came up with this. Yeah. Um, okay, now, now is time for pain. Okay, S serious pain. Here's a guy gold mate in six. Okay, this one is like, um, if you gave me um, 1,000 continuous lifetimes uh, where I live to age 100, 
I still wouldn't solve it. Okay, it's it's that hard. Okay, okay, okay let me find it. But Julian will. No. <laughs> Is this it? is this problem. I test students who are big cheaters and I ask them to solve it. And when the 1700 solves it in a minute and a half, I know they're cheating. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> I, you know, it's a scourge. I cannot get my students to stop using computers in lessons. Um, I may have to go to just screen share where I can see where I can see if they have a computer on or not. Uh, it's amazing, they, they, they all love to cheat. I, I would say like uh, four out of five of my, my kids, they turn on that computer, like we play um, and I get one draw and they beat me four times, you know, <laughs> like any 1700, I'm 2500, but I scored half a point out of five, but they vehemently deny that they're using a the computer, you know. <laughs> This is a mate in six, and this one is a monster. Okay, this is a monster. Okay, how on earth are we gonna mate black in six moves? Uh, do you visualize mate? Well, I'm looking at get, trying to get the knight to e7, the king on g6. But... Knight C7 to where? Well, no, to I'm, trying to the, I'm trying to work out the position, visualize the position. No, 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 go back. I'm just trying to visualize the mating position. Knight E8 yeah. would be mate. One, no, uh, we can get the knight to E7, the pawn on F6, and then the king on G6, and that's yes. mate. But, yes, But Correct. it's a question of getting, getting to that position. Yeah, but how do you, that's exactly, by the way, that's exactly the mating pattern I, I first looked at. Uh, this is... Okay, now, by the way, this is a typical guy gold, okay? One move for black on every turn. If you play knight d6, threatening mate on e8, the only legal move on the board is pawn takes knight. And we just blew the mate, didn't we? That's um, one move. Yeah. How do we... That knight, that knight threw me. It, it really threw me, but it, it comes... Is that you understand it when you finally see the mate? The knight does not move. Can that rook the knight go? Just sits can, where it is. can the rook move from f6 to d6? Is that is that rook? Let's try to dispense for the mating okay, here. Here. Um, okay, here. Yeah, that's handy. Um I'm just thinking if pawn takes rook, knight takes, and then you know, we'll you know what? Let me really um, let me put it in training mode because uh, I need to know the move with six moves it's going to be tough so let me let me just uh, move this a little bit put it in training okay here okay so let's try we just need to know what move we're on okay so mm. rook d6 well they'll play pawn takes where how do you follow through let's go knight takes one. threatening mate in one on e8 and after uh, what about six, here? It's more, it's more than one move. Yeah. Uh, or, or, yeah. And after oh, yeah, there is. Knight there is. Comes, You're right. F6. F6. Yeah. Well, F6, F6 and, hmm. Yeah. D4. This is not it. This is not it. Here's, okay. I'll, you know what I'll do? I'm going to tell you the mating pattern. Okay. And you reach it. Okay. Imagine this mating pattern, our bishop is on the A1, H8 diagonal. Let's say it's on B2, okay, or, or D4, somewhere like that, okay? And black, like, okay, here, here, would be a, here would be the pattern. Okay, let's say we go here, okay, and black, take, black doesn't play pawn takes bishop, but black takes this rook, okay? Oh. Now here, that's, that's the pattern, okay? That's going to be the pattern. Now, how on earth are you going to get that pattern? Because obviously it's not bishop c5 because I'm not going to stupidly take the rook. I'll take this guy and then you have no mate. So it doesn't work. How do you get that bishop on that diagonal and force white's king to take on f6? And 
remember black is stalemated in just two moves d4 d3 stalemate you know if it's black's move that's stalemate so how do you get the bishop on that diagonal what about bishop d6 okay well um can i take the rook now you don't have bishop e5 mate no mm. But you can drop the bishop back to g3. Isn't that stalemate? Or no, then I'll go back here. And I have f6 as a defense. It's not gonna work. Get that get that bishop on b2, where black's last move, black has no choice but king takes f6, and we play bishop d4 mate or bishop a1 mate or bishop b2 mate, one of those or C3 even if that pawn is moved somehow, but. So does he, does he uh, use the rook on H5 to come around and do something with the pawn? Yes, wow, that's right. You go here, yeah. this is the first move. This is the first move. <laughs> and black is in, okay. Black has to play here, right? And luckily, we have one more move. <laughs> black has d3 next. So, where are we going to go next? C1. Yeah. C1. Yeah, on C1. On C5. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try it. C1. So, I play d3. Rook C5. Rook C5. Um, just give away all your pieces. Okay, okay take. Mm. Bishop takes. One, two, three, uh, what if I play four. now knight b6? What if I play knight b6? I don't take the rook. Now you take the knight. Now you take the knight. Okay, you take the knight. Uh, no, it doesn't with work. Knight, no, no, it doesn't work. You can get I take here. No, the king the, you have, f8 is a problem f8 is a problem yeah you you're very close by the way you're you are really close okay you 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 have the idea but you, you you've got to tweak you, you've got to tweak where that rook goes you know to open the file for the bishop with that rook but you're you're going to the wrong place By the way, it's very valuable. Um, I learn a lot when someone posts a really difficult problem and we do what we're doing now. Where there, what we're doing now is a group think, okay? Where people are, are saying, what about this move? What about that move? And we're all solved together, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, not the not the person who posted because they, they know the answer, ah. but they can, the, the person who posts can give hints uh, like, I'll show this to I'll show this to an 1100 student and I'll keep giving them major hints until they solve it. And it's it's incredibly valuable. The group think is an incredibly valuable thing. You ought, you ought to think about maybe having a night where it's a problem solving night where one person knows the answer and everybody work the entire club works on the problem together or study or end game study. And whoever knows the, whoever posted or is the person who knows the answer must give hints to, to put them in the proper direction. Like I've okay. told you, that, go ahead. Let's try work A1. Okay. So I've got one legal move. Work A3. Work A3. I take. B takes, King goes um, to the corner. Okay, this would be stale. Uh, you you wanna go bishop takes or you wanna go king, king A1? No. King. King A1. Okay, I have one legal move. Now you do bishop A3. Okay, Julian, you are you are officially a genius. Okay, you are officially a genius because <laughs> uh, I, you have solved this problem. Okay. And now only legal move for black is take, right? And so yeah, now here, you're bishop B2. Yeah, there there needs to be there needs to be some sort of uh, new title, problem solving genius or something. Like <laughs> you've got one norm for tonight. I'm telling you that I, no, but you I'm, gave sending the you your norm. <laughs> I'm, I'm sending the norm in tonight. Okay, you've got one norm, okay. 
Okay, let's keep looking. Okay. Um, I think if we have a problem solving night as a club, then Julian should lead it and be the one giving the hints rather than doing the solving. Yeah, otherwise he, he'll that. solve everything in five seconds, you know. <laughs> no, no, but no, no. Cyrus, Cyrus goes the clues in that one. It's it wasn't easy. With the clue, it wasn't easy. It, even with the clue, it was very difficult. Yeah, but once you tell us the book C1 so, was wrong. It's so I mean, let's look at this problem from the beginning. Okay. Um, oh, why well, won't it back up? Oh, okay, let's it will not let me back up. Oh, there it will. Okay. Um, but, I mean, look how insane this answer is. I mean, just look at it. I mean, look at it in the, in the hole. Like, this is completely insane, this answer. <laughs> Think right here. You know, oh, of course, my rook should go to a3. You know, no one's going to think of that, right? <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know. Where else? Okay. Well, I, I, um, well, I would say interest, interesting about that was the contributions from various people, because I think it was Mark that, that suggested rook h1 and used the rook to lever open that, that diagonal. Mm -hmm. I would say that whatever the composer was on at the time is, is worth bothering. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hallucinogen kicked in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Do not laugh. Okay. Do not laugh. The next is a mate in one. And <laughs> I, I just laughed. I Sorry. <laughs> okay. Do not laugh. I, I warned you in advance. Okay. This is not easy. I gave I gave this problem to um I gave this problem to um all my students, all, I, I gave it to about uh, 30 students, okay? Guess how many solved it on the first try? Can we guess what it is without seeing the position? No, <laughs> I mean, you, it's, a, it's just a mate in one. It's, the problem is every, it, it looks like you have 15 or 20 mates in one, but there's only one mate in one. There's, there's, the position is so crowded and so confusing. Let, let me find it. Okay, hang on one sec. It's not long um, cancelled, excellent mate, then. Um, <laughs> the standard. It, anyway, um, oh, let me find it. It's 161. Okay, I need to put it in uh, in uh, the view right away. Um, in the Guardian chess book. It's in the, it's in the book. Yeah, it's in the book. Uh, 161. Okay, here it is. Okay, view. Oh, I've already got it in view. Okay, great. Maintain one. Okay, out of my 30 students, approximately 30 students, two solved it correctly on the first try. We're not both are 23. Mentioned. Both are 2300. Okay. Sorry, Every sorry. single student. We're not, oh, we're no, not sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, hang on one sec. Sorry. I that was my I'm not too bright. I I am technology challenged. You need to know. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Maintain one. God. <laughs> by the way, by the way, um, these are the kind of positions. Whenever I post, I always get at least one idiotic comment, and often three to five. Okay, of like, well, so what? I'll just you know, I'll I'll go rook takes queen, or I'll take this free queen on e five. I, I win. You know, it's not about winning; it's about mating in one move. And what they what they don't understand the, the the people that whine about the phantom stipulation like you've got a mate in two I don't care if you have thirty mates in three you failed the problem if you if you find thirty mates in three but no mate in two what they don't understand is let's say you you're playing a king's Indian and you're going after the opponent's king and you've sacrificed two pieces and three pawns okay and you just sense there's a there's a really deep mate there okay. If you don't find it and the king escapes, your opponent escapes, you're gonna be down two pieces and three pawns, okay? So it's, what we learn to do is thread the needle, okay? Analytically thread the needle where there's only one solution and you have to find that one solution. That's why these mates, uh, these mating problems are valuable as training tools. This is a mate in one. Okay, let's do this. Everybody gets one turn. Okay, one guess. Okay. 
<laughs> you're you're out if you if you guess wrong you're out <laughs> where's the main one you there's hundreds of checks there's hundreds of mm. captures uh you can you could take on c8 you could queen on d8 you could you know like there's a million moves Oh. Can we take on c8 and under promote to a knight? Um, no. uh, king f8. No, can king, I take this queen f6? King, no, no. If you under promote I knew that to really. a knight, I was testing you. if you under promote to a knight, king e8 <laughs> is not mate in one, you see? But if you, if you under no. promote, <laughs> if you promote to a queen, let's say you promote to a queen, well, now you have a block on C7. Oh, uh, wait, uh, no. where is the, oh no, on B7, sorry. This is your block and it's not mate in one. No. If you become more experienced um, in, by the way, the, the overwhelming number of students um, mm. who said, Pawn takes bishop knight or pawn takes bishop queen. Overwhelming number, like like uh, eighty percent of them said that. I think so I got it. The, the composer is trying to basically sucker you. Okay, what happens on she queen with here? with the queen. What, why not b eight queen? B eight queen. That's I mean, double check. Queen. Double check, mate, isn't it? It's an illegal. Double check. Oh, it's double check. Check. Apologies, it's, up. Yeah. it's an illegal oh, move, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? Right. <laughs> oh, oh yes, it's illegal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's counting? No, it's just, well, it's just you said you said the eight queen Cyrus. I took it face value, mate. Sorry. <laughs> um. Is it? I think I see it. I've seen it before. Yeah, like oh. yeah. Didn't Jonathan yeah. Jeff? Yeah. yeah. I think I've yes. got it as well. Yes, Mark. Oh, okay. Anyone have an answer? Yeah. Queen A three. Queen where? A3. Queen A three. There you go. There a? you go. Mate. That's the only mate on the board. Queen on E five is pinned. You cover every square is covered. The, the main thing is you don't have queen c5 block, queen d6 block, illegal because of the rook on e1. I, I told you this was not an easy one, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm going to give can you, you put that Mr. Position back, please, now. Cyrus. Yeah, sure. Try other things. Try oh, other. Nice. Well, I think we have been. I thought it was bishop h4, but I've just noticed rook g5. I've got the theme of the queen not being able to. Yep. To, 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 yep. This is, this is the block. I realized yeah. that queen g5 didn't work, but I, I overlooked rook g5. What about. My favorite was, my favorite is queen d8 mate, okay? Because it, <laughs> it's so tempting, but it's an illegal mm -hmm. move because of that bishop on c8. The king on yeah. h3. I think there's a number of white bishops on white squares. I'd already seen two, so I thought oh, there can't be any more. But uh oh, I, I got a scam you on Facebook. Paying attention. Uh, I am I am Jay Bonin. Just sent me a friend request. Except he's already my friend. So someone, it's some hacker trying to. Uh, nice. Okay, what other tries are there? Like, what do you think? There's so many tempting moves. This looks like mate, doesn't it? Here. Because this the queen on e5 can't. But when you move from b6, you just opened up d8, you see? And there's no mate in one here. Yeah, it's just unbelievable that, that there's only one mate here. Like, this looks like mate, too, right? The bishop, mate. It was a bishop on b1. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and it's sneaky because you don't see that bishop. I was interviewed by uh, I am Kostya Kavutsky, 
And he told me, he, he made an amazing confession to me. He said, this problem took him a half hour to solve. He's an I am, okay. <laughs> he said he just had a bug in his head and he just, he, he might've been exaggerating about the half hour, but I bet, you know, he might've taken like 10 minutes to solve it. He just could not find the mate in one. You want me to move on? Yeah, the queen, the queen's going in the wrong direction, isn't it? To, to checkmate that. Mm. Uh, which queen are you talking about well, the queen, the queen, the queen, i mean queen two way three just looks counterintuitive to me yeah you know? yeah it's completely counterintuitive and it looks like there's two blocks on d6 and c5 but right. neither one because the rook on e1 covers um now i just want to say something um these these crowded positions uh people always complain it when I whenever I post it on my on my Facebook page not in the Facebook group they know better um, these are incredibly valuable these crazy impossible positions because believe it or not you get used to doing them you you do them over and over and over and the the level of disorientation goes lower and lower and lower and if you do these crowded problems like this all the time uh, a normal chess position will look trivial to you. Like it, it just looks like it's a barren wasteland, right? Because you're used to these positions. I'm going to give you a, a crowded one now. Guy Gold Mate and Two. This is a tough one. Okay, this, don't do not be overconfident because you saw the other Guy Gold. <laughs> okay, hang on one sec. Okay, this is. Um... 220, okay. Okay, uh, oh crap, I'm showing you. <laughs> Did someone see the answer? No, I'm we're sorry. not seeing anything yet. Okay, great, great. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just hit view and <coughs> click off location. Okay. Okay, share screen, mate in two. <laughs> One of the variations is just mind bending. Okay, it it does not look like mate. Okay, <clears throat> I have. Um... I have 10 incorrect tries here in the book. There's 10 incorrect tries. Rook F3. Okay, let's try it. Okay, Rook F3. Bishop takes. Where's your mate in one? Um, queen takes F3. Uh, C6. Not mate. Is not, not mate. Well, it nearly two. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it nearly is. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I just need to, I'm just enjoying myself this evening. I nothing drives me more nuts than these guys who go. Who cares about the mate and two? I'll just go rook takes bishop on b7 and I win. You know, those guys, I swear to God, I, they should be banned from playing chess, really. They should be just like eliminated from the, the rating pool. Take them out. And they're and they're not allowed to have children either. So we don't <laughs> <laughs> Nothing throws the composers into a rage more than those people, by the way. They, uh, they just go into a rage. One, uh, Stephen, uh, the composer I was talking about, Professor Dowd, uh, he, he once kicked a guy out of the group. He got so mad because the guy said that like three times. And it's like a three strikes in your outlaw. <laughs> like he, he came out of the group for saying that. <laughs> Cyrus. I told you.
guys are tr these guys are, tr are are touchy. You know? Cy Cyrus, do you have the book Test Tube Chess? Uh, say again. S two. Uh, Test Tube Chess by Roy Cross. By Roy Cross. No, I, I think I he he deals with he deals with this concept of what you might say when you were in a group. Right. I sort of play it devil, devil's advocate. You get, you're getting it, I think, except perhaps if you could give more consideration and sort of leads them astray or makes it more fun or, or just, just, just orchestrates the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there you are. I, um, just, I, I started a new gig. I work 60 hours a week. So of course I accepted another job of a monthly article from uh, for chess.com. And my first one is on the benefits of uh, Poe's works and tackle that, uh, who cares if it's main two thing? I, I hit that hard right in the article, you know? Mm. Where's your main two? I think I've got it. What is it? I think 94 and then right. Queen Peace Bishop. That's pinned. Uh, night, night where? D4. Well, the night can't pinned. move. Yeah, pinned. it's pinned. Oh, well. How about if you start with King H2 to go to the pin? Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh. okay. That's a good try, okay. Where's your mate in one? That was my first try, by the way, King H2. <laughs> And it looks like a solution because if you go to G1, bishop takes C5 as check. So it looks like the it looks like a solution. But there is no mate in one. There's no mate in one. Yeah, oh, no dear. mate in one here. Mm. Because if you you move this knight anywhere, there's always a block here. You see, or like yeah, block with the pawn. Okay, then the other try is gonna try is rook G1. Rook B1, you mean, right? Yeah, rook, rook G1. It's B1, so Rook B1. It's B1, yeah. Okay, let's try that. Um, Where's your mate? Where's my mate? Uh, nope, it's not working either. Yeah, the only piece that could give a, a decent check is, is blown, right? Yeah, so. I, I, I was hoping to play Queen D1 if the black square bishop moves. Anyway. Yeah. No, so it's not Rook B1. This is, yeah. This is a, 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 a considered a, a semi crowded problem. There are composers like you, you just cannot imagine the crowding. I mean, like, it's like uh, more than half the board is covered with pieces, like, you know, uh, or, or like like half the board is, is there on, on the board. I'm, ah. I'm talking about half the ah, squares on the board. With, it's or, King G1. Okay, how is this made then? I I now you play knight. Uh, no, you can't. The knight d4 doesn't work. Knight d4, I play c6. Yeah, c6, no yeah. So you come with the king. Okay, we finally got a problem that Julian didn't, didn't solve in 30 seconds. <laughs> king okay, this is, I knew if we can't be king g2. I'm definitely winning out king g2. No. No, it can't be king g2 because we can make okay. any old move. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, well, what do we play? How about here? F3? F3, yeah. Well, F3. Oh, yeah, F3 will wreck it. Yeah, F3 will totally yeah, so that's, wreck it. That's why we'll die king g2. Yeah, 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 you're right. I, I think bishop c8 also works. Bishop c8 has many things going for it. Can't move the knight. Yeah, that's a. So what's actually wrong with rook f3? Okay, bishop. It's the first we thing play. we came up. With. Yeah. Bishop takes because we have b4. King has b4. That's true. So it does. Apologies. And if you yeah. take here. Uh, yeah, you can't. I'm sorry. You cannot yeah. play rook takes f4 because it's pinned, right? Yeah. Work. If we played here, then this would be made, right? Mm. But the problem is uh, bishop takes knight does not work. Yeah, I, was, I was thinking black bishop moves queen d1. Right, right. Th that happens in many variations. Yeah. yeah. In, in the answer, that, that happens. 
So that's why I was looking gotta, at things like Rook B6. Gotta find the square to put the Rook on. Rook B6 is the only look at that. Rook B6. Let's try B6. Rook B6. Um... No, you can't. No, just an idea, but you, you take yeah. it. Yeah. Just take it, don't you? Know? Yeah. 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 I'm not saying well, it's well, an idea, but yeah, that's because that's any, that's any knight check I have B4, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying even And I even have B5 or... Yeah, no, that's not going to do it. Yeah, it's still illegal, but... No, I didn't mean that. I mean, it was just an idea of that sort of idea, though, you know. Well, actually, yeah, it's, it's a problem. Is this, one, F3, this one took me, this one took me 15 minutes to solve. And for Maiden 2, an eternity for me. I, I, like, 15 minutes is the hardest problem in the universe. If, if I take 15 minutes for Maiden 2, it's a really hard one. Ouch. The there's one. You, you gotta put the rook somewhere. Just a matter of finding the right square for the rook. Um, okay. Rook c three. Okay, let's try rook c. I have b four. Rook c three b four. Rook rook here is not rook c four is not made because no, you're in check. No, no, no. I was looking at queen c six. So can't go to f three. I'll go to where, where do you want? Ah. Have we already looked at um, Rook B7? <laughs> I was going to ask that dare we ask about that. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. Okay, we didn't. That the answer, it? No, no, rook, move. rook G3. Okay. Let's try rook g3. No. Um, well, I just take again, usual. B4 still. Uh, B4. Yep. See, here's the problem. Every time you move the rook off the b file, bishop takes knight ruins it. And every time you move the rook on the b file, there's some, you know, there's some issue like rook b1, well, bishop c8, that ruins it. Okay. So this is our dilemma. We... We need the rook both on the B file and not on the B file. So how do we do that? Are you Schrodinger's rook? Yeah. yeah. It, this really is a Schrodinger's rook problem. I mean, the final so the final position in the in one variation, it's surreal. It looked like mate, but it is. What about queen e6? Okay, queen e6. Um, bishop takes knight check. That's it. Mm, knight, knight takes and that's two, right? Yeah. Isn't what? These are the kind of problems though I give my students and we, I give them even worse than this, you know, like more crowded than this. And, uh, they get used to them. At, at, at first, they're just hopeless, you know, like 1800, 1600. Just this is like overwhelming for them. Okay. But if you do it all the time, it becomes easier. It's like anything else that you become accustomed to it, you know. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I ah, helped, right. But then then tab you... out that sugar free tab. And I thought, disgusting now i drink diet coke and i think regular coke is disgusting anything you do with repetition used to what do you think root b6 we looked at that, look at um, that? the answer would be just take there's no mate in one because the knight is pinned you don't even have a check. Yeah. The answer is just mind-boggling. Okay, it's now if you ah. when I first tried to solve this, I would solve this problem in well under a minute because I know Guy Gold. Now, first tried, I didn't know Guy Gold's style. Okay, and it was it was just impossible to solve. There's no solution, and then finally it dawned on. D three. Rook where? 
G3. Say D or E? G. Oh, G3, okay. Um, Bishop takes it, you've got you Queen G4. Oh, yeah, I know. I know, yeah, but you, yeah. but I'm not going to take. I'm going to go. Bishop takes knight check, yeah, yeah, opening yeah. up b4 again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What about e6? Uh, pawn e6. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Bishop c8 again. Our old standby. Okay. I'm, I'm Actually, looking bishop a8. This this would too. A8 would work too because you you can't move the knight. It's pinned. I'm looking for a, a move where he's forced to play f3, uh, blocking the bishop yeah. check. Mm. Yeah, but you can hear. <clears throat> this problem is just genius, though. I mean, it is genius. The solution is like, we look at it and you go, what? You know, you just can't believe that that's the answer. Meaning, don't look for mundane moves. Look for shockers. Only look for shockers. Well, the most shocking move on the board would be Queen D6, but that doesn't do anything. No, but it has to be reason too, because you just cut out your own check, right? You don't have a single check after this. It has to be where where it looks. You at least have a chance to mate. The problem is, you move that rook off the B file. Bishop takes knight always works, okay, because of the mm. king b4, or seems to always work. Uh, you keep it on the b file, the knight's pinned. And there's no, you know, like queen g4 or anything threatening queen f4 mate. This is always check, wrecks it. Mm. it. It doesn't look like white has time to mate in two, in two moves. What do you think? You want me to show answer or you want to keep working? It's up to you. I, I, I don't teach till hours later. I am, I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to spend two hours on this, I'm here for two hours, okay? <laughs> well, a, a, a little longer, maybe not two hours, but maybe a bit longer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let's give ourselves you know, if, if, try and solve it. If all of you lived in San Diego and I lived in England, it, this would not work. I, I I, wake up at like about 4 a.m. every day and I go to bed at about 9.30. Like this is way past my bedtime. Like it's 10, 11 for you, right? At p.m.? That's yeah. way yeah. past my bedtime. You know? Just from 10 o'clock, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a zombie by nine. The thing that's annoying is this must be completely logical, but I just can't see it. It's totally illogical. The move is completely, absolutely illogical. Captain. But, but it has a logic you see at the end. Mm. Okay, do you want a hint? Like a ah, hint? Is, is it something like Queen E8? Let's try. Okay, Queen E8. Um, maybe not known. No, it's not. I, I was just I, thinking of. I, I can just take here, right? Yeah. I, you don't. Yeah, have it doesn't a, work. You, don't, you can't yeah. move your knight. Yeah, that's the problem. That king is really yeah. horribly placed on on h one. Trying to force that's f three. Mm hmm. Yes, you're trying to get queen g four mate. In that happens in one variation. Okay, there is a queen g four mate in the answer. Hmm. By the way, mates in three are exponentially more difficult. Like I can solve every mate in two, no matter how hard they are. Mate in three, forget it. I oh, there's uh, millions of mates in three about, I can't solve. How about rook e three? Aha. Okay. Who said that? Oh yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Rookie. Th oh, yeah. Rook e three. Rookie three. Yeah. Who who got the answer? I didn't see who got it. 
Oh, well, the answer. Mark, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sending in your norm too, Mark. I'm sending in your <laughs> norm. Mm -hmm. Problem solving genius, you got one norm. Okay, here's the point. Because on check with King B4, okay, this cool. is mate. Oh, this is mate. The bishop yeah. is oh. king. <laughs> That's oh. the optical illusion. That's yeah. the optical illusion. It does not look like mate, but it is. Yeah, that's lovely. And every other move, like, okay, let, let's look at every other move. Either bishop move, queen mate, okay? And bishop takes here, queen mate. Uh -oh. um, bishop takes knight this time. Um, rookie, oh, we, I, we just looked at that, sorry. Um, well, well, there's no rook. other... Pawn takes rook, then we have our g4. Yeah, queen g4, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah but um, don't underestimate the, the learning power of these mates in two, especially the complicated ones, the crowded ones. Um, people are scared of them, and they're extremely unpleasant and, and frustrating all because you you start banging your head on the wall after if you don't, if you get 10 tries wrong you know, in a row, but um, they're incredibly valuable they, because your, your orientation of the game alters. You, you, you become accustomed to insanely crowded, complicated positions and regular chess just seems simple, you know? And if you do these enough, if you do these every day, if you solve every day, you will never, ever miss a simple, basic combination. You will never miss one because they're trivial. You, you realize they're completely trivial. What people, you know, I, I just got a new student, okay? And he's rated about 1,000. And uh, I showed him some ridiculously, you know, he, he, play, he showed a game and he missed the ridiculously trivial uh, two-ply combination, which wins the queen. And I showed it to him. And he said, wow, that's beautiful. You know, like, you know, it, it, you, you would all solve it in, in half a nanosecond, right? But the fact that he said, wow, that's beautiful means he doesn't have very many patterns. The, the more patterns you have in your internal database, the stronger you are. And don't think you have to remember them. You will remember them subliminally, something clicks. And, and you, you will realize you solved a problem similar to this and something clicks. Um, anyone want another one or we quit? I, I can give you a king and pawn ending for my new book. You wanna try that or you wanna, you wanna quit? Yeah, one last one. one give us the king and pawn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One okay, last one, yeah. Okay, let's stop share. We go to share. Oh, wait, uh, where are we? What's the, what's the new book, Cyrus? I have two new ones. Um, I have one for new in chess. I can't tell you, sadly, because they're super paranoid and they don't like me to, they don't want me to announce the book in, in advance. Every man doesn't care. So there's two new like books with mostly composed works. One is Tactical Training Move by Move, which should be out in about a month or two. And then there's end game tactical training move by move. So tactical training will be more crowded positions, full game positions, and end game will be sparse. Uh, okay, let me get rid of this book. Go to my end game tactical training. I think it's problem number five. I posted this one. I posted this one uh, in the Facebook group and uh, the first nine people got it wrong. And it was always, they, they, their, their wrong answer was always uh, preceded by easy. And then they give me the wrong move. You know? White to play and win. Even in a king and pawn ending, you have to have a plan. What, what, is, what is white's winning plan here? And the way to discover it is, um, you have to first find Black's defensive idea, which works every time on the wrong move, but there's one version where it doesn't work. What do you think? Say that again. Is the winning move? Could you repeat that, please? Black, 
Black has one defensive plan. Okay, how many legal moves are there? Okay, how many with the king? Is there seven? Eight and, and nine, no, no, seven because six pawn covers f5. Seven with the king, two with the f pawn. So there's nine legal moves in the position. Yes. Okay, only one works. Every single other move draws. Ooh. First thought might be try shouldering. Yeah, yeah. King G five is the That's, obvious one. That was mm. that was the most common. That was mm. the common uh, first move. Um, King B four. I, I will lose if I go if I go uh, try to get opposition. I'll lose by a mile. Okay. Um, like watch. Um, do I go F first? I think F four first. Okay. F four. Yeah. Here, here, here. Well, sorry. Yeah, yeah. King, king out. Okay. Every time, every time black uh, will draw by going behind or to the side of the pawn. They try to win this. Ah. One, two, three. One, oh. Oh, dear. If you play king d4, I play king uh, c2. Now, look how simple this position is. It's ridiculously simple, but it's not easy. The answer is not easy. See, look what happens so you if, you, king, if you go king after king the d4. pawn, you're not going to make it. You're not going to so, make it. See? So it was on king d4. Yeah. Okay, so you went king d5. I went king here. Yeah, now king here. d4. Okay, I go here. Now you play f4. Okay, I go behind. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Does that really not work? One, two, oh, three. Look. The e3. So, yeah. Oh, you lose the f pawn. Yeah. yeah. Might come in handy if you, if you keep it. <laughs> King d5 is not the answer. Okay, now you know you know Black's idea. The draw idea is always going to be come behind the pawn. You that, use that knowledge to find your answer. <clears throat> come behind the pawn. The, stuff like this is never going to work. Yeah, but what um, if you go hang here on. and draw? It limits, yeah. it limits Black's... Uh, uh, Cyrus, well, after I, F... Hang on, hang on. Let's count the moves. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. Kick. One, one, two, two, three. King F4. Okay, I go here. King G5. Okay. Yeah. Now you... Oh, wait a minute. Actually, it doesn't work. You, it doesn't you can't work. Four, you go king e4. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You give your f pawn. Hey, that's stupid. Your internet connection is unstable. Like, why? Maybe because we've exceeded two hours. And the king's too close. So it doesn't <laughs> work. Yeah. It could be that you're, you know, 12,000 miles from me. <laughs> That could be the reason. <laughs> 24 hours from Tulsa. <clears throat> Can we go back to the starting position again? Mm -hmm. Life's like that. You, know, you keep on. We cannot allow the king to come from behind or the side. Every single time that will be a draw. There's one way to prevent that. One, one way. King F3. King F3? Now, how's that going to work? Yeah. Uh, how about King D4? Uh, well, in the starting position? 
I think it's more King, D, King, D, King D3, isn't it? Which one? Try King D4 first King for the D4. gentleman. Yeah. King, D4, King D4 is the correct answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, we have to gain a tempo. We're always one tempo. tempo. So now, if you go here, we're going to win again because the king will be in front. Okay. Like, this, uh, where do you want to go? C5 or D7? D7. Let's go. D7 is totally hopeless. So let's try C5. Okay, here. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. C5 is how we get our temple. Exclam. Here. Exclamation point. Yeah. Oh right. yeah. We, King now, F6. Eric Moscow. We make we make it in time. See, Ooh. and we got to keep our guy. King D4 is the answer because. Um, this move here, our usual answer to draw, this gains a tempo, a crucial tempo. Because now here, we're one move faster because we got F4 for free. We go here, see, one move short for black. Yeah. And we, we keep the pawn. Hmm. But, but just look at the starting position. It looks trivial, right? I mean, it looks like yeah. we should solve this in 10 seconds. Uh, this is a composed problem. This is not a. This is not from a game. This is a composed work by uh, Dobias. This is going to be in my endgame, uh, tactical endgame move by move book. Uh, but uh, just the fact this shows that, like what we see in chess, is just nothing compared to what actually is. Okay, we're we're seeing like a a molecule of of what is a universe. You know. Um, are we quitting here? Say, so, sorry, I was going to say thank you very much, mate. It's been really, really thank helpful. Thank you, everyone. Thank enjoyable. you, everyone. I, I really thank appreciate you. it. Yes, uh, Came really Chess Club. Nice meeting you all. And thank you, Jim, also for inviting me. Um, yep. I would that, love that to do this saying. again. If you, if you want to do this in the future with other uh, books I'm, I'm in, because this was this really fun. This was really fun. Yes. I like I, I love the I love the think I love the group think um, aspect of it. We all we all help each other solve. Okay, so we will see you. I I'll, I'll let you guys go to bed. It's, uh... thank, thank, thank you everybody <laughs> for attending as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know uh, if you got any. We're going to edit the video and put it on the website in uh, several days' time. So if you want to have another look back at anything, you can. I'm going to because I really enjoyed a lot of those puzzles. And I think, uh, as yeah. you said, Cyrus, looking at them, actually, you know, it's like training, isn't it? You, you suddenly get better at, at finding things. Uh, so I'm going to have a go at doing that. So thanks, yeah. again, Cyrus. And we would like to invite you back. So uh, keep mm. in touch. Uh, I'm open anytime. Anytime you, you want me back, I'm here because this was, right. this was fun.